Hey guys, welcome to the Acrylic Asylum. I'm Mike Ferris, and in this video, we're going to do this still life wine piece here. The tools and materials are down in the description box below, as well as a traceable image for this up over on Patreon in two standard canvas sizes. Okay guys, let's get started. So I'll be starting off with an 8x10 pre-stretched canvas here. And I'm going to be using my flat number 12 natural bristle brush. And I like it because it's got those frayed out edges and I can really blend well and make nice gradients. So, so I'm starting off with burnt umber, raw umber, cad yellow, and titanium white for the background. So I'm going to start light in here and then gradually get darker. And I'm going to start with some burnt umber and raw umber mixed together. And let's get a little bit of yellow in that. This will make it a little warmer and a little titanium white actually quite a bit i want this very light warm beige color to start with so i'm going to go in the middle here and just drag it out and basically cover the whole canvas with this general color so now i'm going to take those same colors and again some more just a little bit of white um, you don't have to have every exact mixture sometimes there might be a little bit more yellow or more brown it's all good so now I'm just going to take these darker values of browns, that's the burnt and the raw umber, and I'm going to go around the edges and blend that back into the lighter value. And as paint runs off the brush, just very light pressure and just dusting that over very lightly, and that makes a nice gradient, especially with these natural bristle brushes. It is perfect for doing these gradients and blends really well. So this is just going to be this darker vignette that's going to surround and make this lighter area pop out. Okay, so after the background dried, I went ahead and used wax transfer paper and the image that you can get over on Patreon for the drawing process and traced it out. And I did put a short video link on transferring images to your canvases. So starting off, I have raw umber, permanent black, violet, burnt umber, magenta red, cad orange, cad yellow, and of course, titanium white. And I'm using my quarter inch angle brush and this is a very precise brush. It helps to get crisp lines and really get into some small areas when I'm going around stuff like this. So this will be for me the brush of choice. So I'm gonna take some of this violet and I'm gonna add quite a bit of this magenta into it. So actually it's magenta with a touch of violet into it. And to that, I wanna add a little bit of this permanent black just to dull it down a little bit. I want this dark sort of maroon lavender color and I want to start just blocking in for now. So this will be the general color. And as you can see, I can use the very fine edge of this angle brush very well. And it really gives me that precise line and makes it very crisp. And I love that. So just going to fill in and block in with this general color for the top of the bottle for now. Okay, no cleaning yet. I'm gonna take some permanent black and a little bit of this violet to it. So just a very dark color here. And I'm gonna establish where I want the bottle to come up to to meet the wrapper of the bottleneck there. And I'll just again use a very precise edge of the angle brush and fill in these nice lines around it like so. And then just pull the paint in and block in with this color. And with the same dark value, I'm going to establish where I want the wine level to be.
Okay, so right here I did cover this too much and I did mean to leave that open. So I'm just taking just water now and just like this, I can pull that paint right off and it's like it never happened. So the other option would be if it does dry and you do that, then of course you'd have to spend some time building up some light layers on top of dark and that would be no problem. So now I'm just gonna take some black and that violet again and I wanna add another layer there. And now I wanna take and I wanna bring down the wrapper of this bottle just a little bit further like so. So I'm just covering up over that. So now I've got my number 10 flat brush here and I'm gonna take some of this violet now and most of that color off my brush, a little bit of titanium white and a little black into that to dull it down. So I'm gonna make this sort of muted dull lavender color and I want it to show up just a teeny bit and with the edge of my flat brush, I am just gonna come down and this is going to be the start of some of these highlights and sparkle and shine on the bottle. So no cleaning yet, I'm just going to take some titanium white and Let's make these show up just a little bit more. I want it heaviest up here and brightest up in this area and then sort of faded down as I kind of streak down on what I just did. Can even use my finger there if I want to. So yeah, just kind of something like that. And these are gonna be some really nice highlights that are gonna to start to build up. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some permanent black and a little bit of violet, a little bit of magenta red together, a little bit of raw umber into there. So I'm looking for this even darker sort of maroon color here because on this side, this is gonna be more of the shadow side here. And I wanna go on the right side and make that a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna add some magenta red and I did not clean my brush. On this side, I wanna make this really vibrant red. And between this dark and this lighter side, this is gonna really show this three-dimensional look to it. So now I'm just gonna take some white into that value. And let's go right here. This is gonna be the highlight of this wrapper. So I'll just fill this in. And I have very little paint on the brush, by the way. I'm not really loading my brush too much. You can see it's not a big gob of paint. It's just a little bit to sort of glaze over. So that's kind of what you want to do here is not load too heavy. You can always put more paint, but too much is just very overwhelming and hard to deal with. So now I'm just taking more magenta red and with it left on my brush, right where the dark and light meet, I want to go right over that. And that really settles that down into a very nice light transition. Okay, no cleaning yet. And I'm taking some more titanium white. And this is my number two flat brush that I'm using, by the way. You can use whatever brush you're comfortable with. You can even use a small angle brush if that's what you want to use. This, for me, is just a good brush that I find for blending in small areas like this. So now I'm just picking up more titanium white. And each time I do, there's less of the color in my brush and more titanium white, making this brighter each time. And again, just very little paint on the brush each time and just glazing over and dusting that over into those darker values. Okay, let's enhance that highlight a little bit. I'm gonna take some magenta, some cad orange, some violet into that. That's got a little touch of that black in it still. And let's go a little titanium white into that. So just gonna go now and let's go back over that. And again, very little paint on the brush. Okay, no cleaning and back into that same value of colors and this time no titanium white and I want to lightly dust over from that very dark value and sort of on top of where the light meets that and give it that really nice natural transition there. And again, one more time, just straight up magenta red right here. I want to make this a very vibrant red there. And then with the little bit left on my brush again, I'm going back over this stuff very lightly and just kind of fading that over and making that nice gradient transition. OK, 
Okay, now grabbing my script liner brush and titanium white, I'm gonna strike some highlights up here. So now I'm gonna take that very dark maroon color that's on our shadow side. Let's go on top and bottom of this highlight there. And with that same dark value, I'm gonna make some of these wrapper folds up here. You can omit this step if you want. I think it just adds a little bit more interest. So now with a clean script liner and just titanium white, I'm gonna strike a highlight on either side, or I'm sorry, on one side of those dark shadows that I just made. And just like that, you can make these little nice wrapper details. Okay, so now with my number two flat, I'm gonna take just titanium white and start making some direct highlights. Okay, so with just permanent black now, I'm gonna take and knock back some of this highlight because I don't want it that thick. So as you can see, anything you don't like, you just knock it back, that simple. Okay, so now I've got my number 10 flat brush and just titanium white, and I'm just gonna use the width of the brush and just come down and establish basically where I want this direct highlight to be. And I'm not too terribly worried about it again as far as how perfect it is at first. Again, you can just take that dark value and knock anything back or even use it to define and straighten the line if it goes away from you. So just go for it, it's all good. And I'm just gonna fill in the rest of this now and I'll build this up and make this brighter. Okay, and right here, this is just a bit of a broken sort of highlight here that shows maybe something going on in the background. It just adds a little bit more interest, I think. You can make these however. So again, just gonna brighten this up and add more layers of white. So taking permanent black again, up here I thought I went a little too high with my highlight because it sort of compromised the curve of the bottle. So just bringing it down just a little bit. No worries, and also gonna define a little bit of this one. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to my quarter inch angle brush and I'm gonna take a mixture of raw umber and some permanent black and a little bit of titanium white. That's just to bring it up so it's not super dark. And I'm gonna start with the rim of the glass. So with my quarter inch angle brush, as you can see, I'm just gonna take this darker value and just sort of streak it in some places. This is gonna start to build up some of the depth and dimension and shadow within the glass. And it's also gonna serve to help pop against those bright highlights and really enhance this thing. So now I'm gonna take some titanium white now and this is what's really cool with this angle brush is again when I can use the edge there but then right here I can just use the shape of it and look at how well it just keeps it intact like this. This brush is really precise like I said it is one of my favorite brushes for this kind of stuff. So now I'm just gonna really build this shape how I'd like to see it and you can do these however you want. These are just direct highlights and Light play has really no rules as far as where you want to put them. Just the only thing is follow the curvature of your glass and that will really make this thing shine and pop. So just going to put one there and then skip a little bit and kind of make another one right there. So with a little bit of paint left on the brush, I just kind of want to streak some of those 
kind of like I did with that darker value just here and there. And between the dark and the light, like I said, this is going to pop this out and really bring this dimension and three-dimensional look to it. So after my angle brush, I'm going back to my number two flat brush now. And the angle brush is good because, again, it just establishes my shapes really well. But with this number two flat, I can come in here now and fill in the shape that's already been established by the other brush. And with this, I'm going to take more titanium white and just build up these bright highlights. Okay, so with the white ran off the brush, I'm gonna go into a little bit of that dark value again with raw umber and a touch of black and just barely glaze just a little bit on the sides of the glass. This is gonna really enhance the shadow and three-dimensional look to this. Okay, and just a teeny bit of more value there. I wanna make this show up just a wee bit more. Alrighty, no cleaning yet. I'm going to take some of this magenta, some of this cad orange, a little bit of this violet, a little bit of permanent black into there, some titanium white. So I want this very muted, dull sort of lavender here and just teeny bit of color. I just kind of want a hint of some of the wine reflective color in the glass. All right, picking up more titanium white now. Did not clean, and just right here where the bottom of the glass is and where the stem comes up, I'm gonna hit that and give it this nice glass effect with that white. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna take some of this magenta and some of this cad yellow. So this is a clean brush, and yellow makes the magenta a little bit more vibrant. And I wanna strike some wine color right here where the light's kinda hitting it. And this is gonna really help to enhance and pop this out really well. So just gonna get now more magenta in there. So I'm gonna to have to build this up because this is a dark value that I'm putting this on top of. And now just more violet. So with the violet, I just kinda of wanna go around the edges of it and not cover it all up, but just sort of blend that down and give it that gradient from the dark to the light. Okay, so for a break now, I'm gonna take some titanium white and let's brighten up these highlights and I'm using my number two flat brush. Okay, giving some time to dry. Now I'm just taking more magenta red and let's do another layer. So again, taking just violet now because it is a dark value, I'm just gonna go just lightly 
around this magenta here. And again, that settles that down and shows this natural light transition and how there's a gleam of light just sort of showing the true color of the wine in this way. And again, let's go back in and do more titanium white and brighten this up. Okay, just pure magenta now, and I'm just gonna tap it where I want it the most vibrant, and then not really bring it into that faded stuff. I just kinda wanna dust it out and show that really nice glowing sort of zing out of the wine there. So now I'm just taking some raw and burnt umber together. I'm just gonna block that in. Okay, now I'm just gonna go into some cad orange and some cad yellow now. And it's got a touch of this raw umber into it. And this is just going to be blocking right now for this barrel for now. Okay, just going to take some raw umber and some permanent black. And with that mixture, just going to block in the rest of the barrel with this. Okay, no cleaning yet. I'm going to take some of this cad yellow and a touch of this raw umber into it. And I'm just going to go in and let's do another coat and block this in again. Now with my clean number two flat brush, I'm going to take some burnt umber, some cad yellow, some cad orange, and just a little titanium white. And just with the edge of my brush, I'm going to just going to hash in just some of these things like this and I'm not going to cover up all that dark value because that is going to be some wood grain details and again this is just blocking stages and I'm just getting general color where it goes. Okay, no cleaning, just gonna pick up some burnt umber now and let's just hash in some of this here and there. Okay, with my number two flat brush and going into some more of that yellow with a touch of raw umber and this time more titanium white, I wanna bring this up a little bit more and add another layer. So with some of that color left on the brush, I'm just gonna take and hash just some of that here and there. So going back up to that orangey mixture now, just adding a little bit more cat orange to it. And again, just gonna hash that here and there, but not everywhere and letting those other values play along. Okay, so now let's get more of this orange and burnt umber into it. And again, this just changes variations, which changes values, and having those other values play together brings out this depth and dimension and really makes this look more like wood each time. Okay, so now just taking some cad, I'm sorry, titanium white and a little bit of raw umber into that. This is just going to be a striking highlight on either sides of the top of the barrel like so. Okay, so now I've got my script liner brush and lots of water with the raw umber and permanent black i'm pulling it through to a point like so and this is where i want to start to build some wood grade ah, i'm sorry <laughs> wood grain details so just like so just here and there i'm just gonna use the very tip and just sort of hash those in a little bit and this is really going to be the start of looking more like wood grain
Okay, going back to my number two flat brush and into that orangey brown color. This time more titanium white into that and a little bit more cad yellow. That makes it more vibrant as well as brighter. And here and there again, just gonna hash the edge of my brush in. And a little bit of paint at a time, like I said, don't put too much paint, it'll be too overwhelming. You can always add more. So right here, this is just gonna be more of a highlight area where light's hitting it. So it's gonna show up a little bit brighter in that regard. And again, not covering up everything, but letting those other values play through. Okay, so now grabbing raw umber and just a touch of cad yellow into that. I just kind of want to put some rust spots and build some little character spots, as I like to call them, on these metal straps here and there. Already gonna pick up a mixture of this permanent black, a touch of raw umber, and with the edge of my number two flat brush, I'm gonna start making the separation lines here that go down the barrel. All right, with a clean number two flat brush, going back into that yellow with a touch of raw umber and more titanium white, let's hit some striking highlights. Okay, I'm permanent black and raw umber together with my number two flat. Just a teeny bit of paint on the brush. And on this right side is our shadow. So this is going to be a little darker over here. And I'll just sort of fade that over just a little bit. Okay, with a clean brush now and more titanium white, just brightening up some highlights. And with that dark value of black and raw umber, I'm gonna go underneath these metal straps and just sort of hit kind of this striking shadow area. Okay, with my script liner brush now, and again, lots of water, let's go into some titanium white and into that orangey brown yellow mixture, more titanium white as you can see, pulling through to a point and just with the tip of it like this, I'm going to go and hit these striking wood grain highlights. So as you can see in the middle here, there's more highlight going on. So that's where I started first. And again, in all the paintings that you do, whenever you want to start something 
or where you're gonna lay your brush first, you always wanna put it where something is gonna be the darkest or the lightest, depending on what you're doing, and then go out from there, and then just use the leftovers off your brush to sort of fade off with, and that gives it that natural light transition and realism to it. So again, just hitting just the tip of this script liner with that very light value, and again, the leftovers go and dissipate off to the sides, and we really keep the highlight where it is really going on, so, now just gonna take some of this, what is that, I'm sorry, violet and permanent black, and let's fill in and block in for the grapes now with this. So let's do some reflections of the grapes in the bottle here, and these are gonna be a little bit distorted. Okay, with a clean number two flat brush going into some more cat orange and titanium white into that brown orangey color and i want to give this wood especially in the highlight area a little bit of an orangey glow to it All right, with a clean brush now, I'm gonna go into some violet now, a touch of permanent black, and just a little titanium white. I don't want this too bright yet. And I'm gonna start building up some highlights on our grapes. So just kind of like these half moon or half dome shapes in a way, don't cover the whole grape, but just kind of like so. And then once you get down here into the darker area, you can put these highlights wherever you want, and that defines where the next grape is. So wherever you wanna put them, as Bob Ross would tell you, <laughs> then that's exactly where they should be because that's where they live. So decide your grapes, and if you don't like something, take that dark value, knock it back, and make this however you want. Okay, going back to my script liner brush, lots of water, and with this dark mixture and some titanium white, as you can see there, just pulling through to a point. And with the tip, let's just put in a few sticks and twigs wherever. Alrighty, going back into more titanium white with my number two flat brush, and I don't want to cover up all that faded color. That really takes away from the shine and glow and that natural light transition if I do. So as you can see, it's a little bit brighter now, and just gonna build these up and make these a little bit brighter, and again, not cover everything up each time as I do it. And that really builds up its shine. Okay, no cleaning and just a little bit of violet to that. And I just wanna lightly dust around this lighter value with that violet, cause that kind of enhances its shine and glow when you can see some of the color of the grape being introduced in there. So just a little bit, not much.
Okay, guys, so I went ahead and signed, and I want to thank you so much for joining and watching. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any lessons in the future I'll be putting out. And give this one a shot. This is super simple, really not much to it at all. It will definitely turn up. Check out my Facebook like page at the Acrylic Asylum with Mike Ferris, and there you can post your results that you do with me. I'd love to see your work there. Drop your questions and comments down below. And until next time, happy painting, everyone.